Hello Shiny viewers, I am DS, your psychologist and welcome to another episode on Channel Need. In this episode, I'm going to discuss a very interesting topic, especially for many uh, of you who might be considering cohabiting or living with an ENTJ, either as a partner or as a roommate. How is it going to be like living with an ENTJ? Actually, for many of you, this is going to be a root shock, particularly for the ENFJs and the ESFJs or other SI users. So this episode is going to help you a lot in understanding before you even move in with the ENTJ what is likely to be happening. First of all, because the ENTJ is likely to be a very fair individual, you will have actually half the space. It will be divided in a very clear manner, demarcation. So presume the ENTJ is already living in the house and you are shifting to live with the ENTJ, then he can assign you half of his wardrobe. So there will be a very clear demarcation. Anyway, for this video, it is very male inclined. So I am really talking on behalf of ENTJ males, but I would presume that ENTJ females are likely to be similar. So maybe he will say that the entire dressing table is going to be yours. This side of the room is mine, is my space. Now, whenever an ENTJ talks about his space, it really means his space. You try not to touch his space or invade into his space because he knows exactly where his things are. You do not shift them out. He will get very irritated and frustrated if the things that he wants are not there when he is trying to find it. The worst thing is sometimes he may blame you for misplacing his things when actually it is there in plain sight. So one thing about the ENTJ is that the ENTJ is really very willing to make changes for you if you are important to the ENTJ. But there is one condition, as long as this does not take much of his time. So different ENTJs may be different, but I would presume that the ENTJ, since he really values efficiency, may tend to press toothpaste, for example, anyhow. So the tube may actually look very dented at different places. If you do not like it, then you have to bear with it. If you complain about it, he may make a conscious effort to change that behavior, but it may not last because it's just not efficient. So an ENTJ is very likely to demarcate the room in such a way that you will have your personal room to put your personal belongings. So there will be usually my space and your space and perhaps some shared space. That shouldn't be a problem for many people. So one of the major problems I think would have been the topic of cleanliness. Let's look at housekeeping cleanliness in general. When it comes to grooming, the ENTJ is really very particular. He wants to dress well. So I am going to divulge a lot of uh, personal dirty secrets about how I live. I change my shirt on the top every day, but I can sometimes wear my pants for weeks. So I do not change my pants. I take them out, just hang it, and then the next day I will wear the same pants again efficient. So if you really mind that, then maybe you can do the laundry. <laughs> so the ENTJ can be very haphazard when it comes to housekeeping. Sometimes he does things, but sometimes he does not. Why? This is because he does not follow any routine, given that he uses NI as his auxiliary function. So sometimes I come home, if I feel like it, and it's nothing to do with your FI, and it's just like, okay, I think that today I should throw the litter out. Then I will take the litter, pack it, and walk out to the chute, throw it. Otherwise, I can do it on the following morning. So there is no predictability in this regard. But if you set rules for the ENTJ, the ENTJ can follow. That's because he values you. But on his own, if nobody says anything, then it can be really very haphazard. So I have something to show you. So this is uh, my ASOP mask bottle. It looks like this. So what I want to illustrate is that on normal occasions, on the shower top or on the dressing table, or on the sink, you find a lot of these kind of items and they are quite dirty, you see, like they have stain marks all over. If you have a, a mirror, the mirror is likely to have water, water stains. And this is a normal phenomenon. The ENTJ may not be very concerned with cleanliness. So do not expect to see or find something that you will find in a movie or in drama serials because they just want to present to the viewer something that is very nice. The typical ENTJ house can be a little bit messy, especially if it's male ENTJ. The ENTJ is likely to clean, but not for the sake of cleanliness, but maybe sometimes for aesthetic purposes or because of health. 
Like when I am showering, then I look at the wall, it looks moldy, and I know that mold can cause illnesses, so I decide to scrub it. Okay, it's very occasional. So now let's move on to personal cleanliness. From this ENTJ's point of view, I really spend very little time on the shower. I think much less time than average. Basically, I just soak myself, rinse, and I go. I think one shower session can be as short as three to five minutes. So not really five minutes because I play a song as I'm showering and I would have finished before the song ends. So I do not take long showers because of efficiency. So I do not waste water, do not waste soap, and most importantly, I do not waste time. Showering for many people may be a relaxing event, but I prefer to relax by doing other things. So as you can see, cleanliness may be an issue when you are living with an ENTJ. This is because the ENTJ assigns very little importance to cleanliness. Not exactly that the ENTJ assigns very little importance to routine. The ENTJ can definitely follow routine. For example, if I'm ill, I will follow and comply with the doctor's instructions to take medication. And I will follow duly. So here, it's nothing to do with routine. The ENTJ can follow routine because it is important to him. But cleanliness is not important, so he doesn't do that. But since you are shifting in, especially if you are a partner or lover, and you are important for the ENTJ, then you will realize that the ENTJ can make changes for you. But if you are only moving in with an ENTJ as a roommate, and that is not very important to the ENTJ, then expect that there is going to be a mess. Okay, I hope that this episode has given you some idea how it is going to be like living with the ENTJ. If you have enjoyed this video, do give us a like. If you have topics that you want us to cover, we can line them up. So if you have not subscribed, do consider subscribing so that we can bring you more ENTJ, MBTI and fun stuff. Okay, I'm going to sign off now and I'll see you in our next episode. Bye-bye.